All right, guys, how you doing? Welcome back to another squad update video. Hopefully you've seen the one for the men's team already, but this is the women's team squad update. I've got the women's team manager, Jason Stevens here. How are you, sir? Yeah, good. Thank you. Great to see you uh, on the eve of another season in a new level. As we know, both our men and women's teams achieved promotion and titles last season. So it means women's team going up to tier three. It's not the first time that this this club, if you like, has been at tier three because obviously AFC Basildon, as we were formerly known before we did the merger of hashtag, had been at that, that, that level. Um, and we brought them back. That was the plan. When we first got together and brought you guys into the hashtag setup, it was about getting us back to where we belong and then seeing how we can kick on. And we've achieved that first objective, haven't we? Yeah, 100%. I mean, God, uh, interrupted by COVID. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're there now. And the plan has always been building for tier three. Now we've got a new plan. Yeah, exactly. New plan indeed. Um, and there's a lot of you know new challenges coming with with Tier 3. We were already in a league in Tier 4 with some big names, weren't we? We had the likes of AFC Wimbledon that we were competing with. You know, lots of you know, Norwich, for example, teams that have got those, those senior men's team affiliations. But going up a level now, it gets even more competitive. You know, there's serious budgets. There's full-time teams in our league. Like how much do you see that step from Tier 4 to Tier 3? Like how difficult do you think it will be? There will be challenges there. Yeah. I mean, I think every year what we're seeing is the amount of investment going into the women's game, which is great, by the way. Yes, 100%. Um, but it makes it everyone's job a little bit harder. Yeah. Um, and spe particularly this summer, there's been significant increases in operational cost budgets in terms of how teams are going more professional. With the um, increasing um, spaces now going up to tier two, it used to be one space between the two leagues, yeah. north and south. Now we've got two. So now everyone sees that as a realistic opportunity to get in, uh, and let's, let's be fair, ambitions to go to WSL. So more and more professional named clubs, um, especially those linked with the Premier League, yeah. um, they are going for this. They are going for this. So yeah, it makes it exciting. It does, it for exciting. sure. To give you guys a bit of context, if you're not familiar with the Women's Football Pyramid, so obviously you've got the Women's Super League, which is their version of the Premier League, the top tier. Then you have the Women's Championship, much like the Men's Championship, second tier. When you get to the third tier, which is where we now are, there's two different divisions. You've got the Sub National League Southern Premier Division and the Northern Premier Division. We're in the Southern. And as Jason pointed out, it used to be, only until this year has it changed, it used to be that you could win the Southern Prem and not go up because you then had to win a playoff match against the winner of the Northern Prem. But now you just got to win the league and you go up. Still only one spot, no playoffs, nothing like that. But it is obviously a 12-team division, whereas, you know, for example, our men are now in a league with, with 22 teams. So there's less games, there's there's there's... If, if there was maybe 20 spots, you'd like to think there'd be two spots for promotion. But women's football's not quite there yet. So we've still got the one spot and we've got some big teams. We'll talk about some of the teams uh, we'll be facing this year. But obviously the main purpose of the squad update video is talking about the comings and goings that we've had during the summer. Uh, new faces to get to know before we see them in action. And, you know, if, confirming any departures as well. A uh, few other things worth talking about. I think one of the reasons that we're seeing more growth and more money coming to women's games, of course, there is a World Cup on as we're recording this. Um, I'm not sure when you guys are going to see it, but as we're recording this, the women are about to play for England tomorrow in their semi-final against Australia. Alex Bayliss is out there right now. Obviously, she's our former women's captain turned vlogger. She's been vlogging a lot of our stuff. She's going to keep doing that, but she's very busy at the World Cup right now. Make sure you check out her content and support it on her channel. There'll be a link in the description. But when she comes back, she's going to be uh, getting back into it. But yeah, I think it's actually interesting timing because it was the last World Cup that actually made me reach out on Twitter and, and then ultimately find you guys for a merger. Seeing England in the in 2019 World Cup and go like, nah, women's football is, is, is happening. It's getting really lively. I want to get involved in it with hashtag. So we've come full circle. We've come a whole World Cup cycle later and look where we are. And I think something I say quite a lot, I sort of, when I get interviewed or anything about women's football, I usually put a challenge down for some of the bigger clubs that aren't doing enough for me. Like when we go and beat like a, 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 a very well-known football team, I'm not going to name any names, but we've, we've beaten many that have got a huge, you know, men's team. And we beat them sometimes quite convincingly in women's football. I, I, I mean, I've, obviously, I love it. It's great. It's amazing what you guys can do there. But equally, it's almost disappointing in a way for me as well, because it's like we shouldn't be able to beat them. You know, these guys have got millions of pounds at their disposal. We've come into women's football very recently with the, only the money we've got is money we're generating ourselves. And we're able to put together a better team or, or, or work out a way of beating them. And that's usually for me because said teams aren't investing in the game enough. But it's a double-edged sword because you put that challenge out there and suddenly they start investing and then we start getting beat. So, <laughs> you know, it's good for the game. Uh, but equally, the fact that a lot of people aren't getting behind women's football still is why we're, we're, we are where we are. And hopefully we can keep doing that. Um, Sponsor-wise, 
before we get into it, uh, just to let you know, obviously, a uh, big thank you to Fridays who gave us two years of sponsorship in women's football. We do appreciate that. That deal's now finished. We've got a brand new sponsor going to be announced very soon. You'll see it on the new kits, which will also be revealed very soon. So keep an eye out for that. It's different to the men's team sponsor. So the women's kits will be unique once again. Um, let's talk about pre-season. You've had five games, yeah. four wins, one loss. Yep. Um, that loss came in the most recent game. I was down there watching. It was at St. Mary's, the actual Southampton Stadium, versus the Southampton women's team, who just got promoted from Tier 3 to Tier 2 a couple of years ago. Um, they're a full-time outfit. We were 1-0 up in, fairly deep into the second half. We must have been pretty proud. We obviously lost the game, but it was a good showing. Yeah, I mean, the target we set the girls beforehand, I mean, being realistic, we know they're a full-time outfit. So our measure was always 70 minutes yeah. to see where we are, to get what we wanted out of this preseason. Can we be competitive with them for 70 minutes? Yeah, 1-0 up to about, I think it was like 58, 59, and yeah. they won all. So at 70 minutes, we were one all. So I was really pleased with that, really pleased. Yeah. Um, the, the signs were really encouraging in terms of how we've evolved from last year. That's the other side of it. The, how's the football evolving? So... That was a great measure for us. Um, and we had some really good pockets of football in that game. We did. And yeah. we had some other good results as well. Uh, in, uh, elsewhere in pre-season, we beat two other tier three sides. So yeah. the new tier three side ourselves. We managed to beat both Stoke and Derby. Again, that's the Stoke City, the Derby County women's sides. Uh, we also beat a couple of lower ranked sides, including Millwall. Um, some big names in there. What was the thinking? Like, I, I, I think I know the answer to this. It's probably that we got the opportunity to play at St Mary's. It's obviously, don't ever not take that. But also, definitely the hardest fixture of preseason was the final one. Was that thinking about our, our first few fixtures in the season? Because they're they're tough fixtures to start, aren't they? You wanted to get them playing at that sort of level. Yeah, but we didn't know our fixtures um, when this opportunity came around. Right. This goes back to a couple of years ago when we played Southampton when they was tier three in the quarterfinals of the National uh, League yes. Cup. Um, again, they were you know better word they were spanking every team in the South Division six seven nil. Um, we took them all the way down at their place and they beat us 1-0, 88th minute winner. Yeah, And that performance has left a mark on several of the players, the coaching team, and they wanted to get us to come down to give them a game again. Obviously a lot's happened since then. Um, they've gone on to become more professional and uh, we've just now just got promoted to tier three. So me personally, it's also good to have to rein the players in a little bit. Mm. This is the level we're trying to aspire now. This is the next challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, this team here, they're, they're at the top end. They're in the top six of tier two. Yeah. We want to be there one day. This is where you've got to go. So, yeah, let's put it in perspective. So it was always good to just have that perspectiveness just before we go into the season. 100%. For me, it's amazing. I'm so like proud to be sitting in the stand watching our team play at St. Mary's against the championship team, second tier side, you know, a good second tier side, like you say, and compete. Like It's amazing to think only a seven-year-old club is able to do that, but we are, and we more than uh, worthy of the game. Uh, you had some good team bonding as well, I saw in pre-season. You did some rock climbing, a bit of camping. Or what, what, how was that? Yeah, it's a big part of the, the women's culture that we try to create. Is For me, how they get on with each other is going to serve us well for when we experience some tough times because it's not all going to be what we've experienced in the last couple of years where we win the majority of games. We may experience uh, some a series of losses, mm. but for me, it's how we stick together, how we overcome and adapt to those challenges. So, Team building was a massive part of the preparation. So we started off with a bit of OCR, obstacle course racing, put them into teamwork um, at the beginning of pre-season. And then we went up to Mount Cook in Derbyshire and we'd done some, had an overnight stay, done some rock climbing, abseiling, um, potholing, um, cart building and fun, just some fun activities. But any surprises in there? Any, any gifted rock climbers in the group? <laughs> to be fair... They, they, you know, you look at the height factor, yeah. And some of them overcome some big challenges because even with abseiling coming down, you know, one of I oh, always say to them, look, give everything a go. Yeah, I know we're, you can be intimidated, you can be scared, but to overcome your fears, uh, hopefully there'll be some correlation that we can take into yeah. into the football. So yeah, they all overcome it. They all gave it a go, and yeah, so. I'd love, I'd love to have made a video on that because you would have seen <laughs> certain players and say the, how they overcome that, and that was fantastic. Well, speaking of videos, we do want to have more videos for you guys from the women's football and the women's season this year on the extra channel. So make sure you subscribe to it if you haven't already. We're definitely trying to bring you as much as possible. Um, okay, before we get on to players, let's talk about your backroom staff because there's a few changes there as well. Um, we've got new faces both in your team and the reserves as well. Um, who have who, you welcomed to the group? Yeah, well, like when we go up, we needed to have a look at ourselves and go, right, how can we go to the, the next level? Um, 
one of the big things that we've talked about as a club is that transition, getting players coming through the youth section. Um, and so we needed to basically revamp our reserve side. Um, so we brought in an experienced um, team. Um, Dan, yeah, who's Dan Merrick, who's a very excellent coach, been around, I suppose, the lower levels of um, women's football, but got some really good contacts. Um, and then his team with Hannah and John um, and Nicholas, they're going to come in and make a, hopefully bridge that gap between reserves and first team because we want to see one or two come through ideally there's a side project right we want to compete we want to be competitive in the league but at the same time we want to see some young players come through and given the opportunity definitely definitely and then uh within your setup i know sean eldridge has been a massive part of a number of different roles actually hasn't he over the years for the uh women's team he was he was secretary when, when i got involved but i think he's obviously been a coach i think he's maybe run some teams before that as well he's just been all over the gaff amazing servant uh, he's stepping back for a little bit. Yeah, he's just taking... I'd say the story's not closed with Sean, yeah. but he just needs some time. He's just had a new baby and he's got another job. So he just needs a little bit of time to balance it out. But yeah, Sean's been brilliant. As you know, he was an integral part of keeping the club alive. Um, the negotiations with yourself to yeah. bring us all in. Um, he has run the youth teams there. He has been secretary, like you said. And we got him involved with the coaching last year. So yeah, Sean's... Uh, I'd say it's not a loss, but Sean will be missed for now. Yeah, yeah hopefully we'll see You'll him be again. back, Sean. I'm sure he'll be at some games. And then Striz <laughs> and Nicky have also joined as well. Could yeah, yeah. so obviously we were losing Sean. We needed to replace. Um, one of the aspects that we did on training um, last year was that within the coaching that me and Craig does, um, the girls enjoyed the one-on-one -on -one coaching. So Nick's coming in to do the one-on-one -on -one coaching just to help refine strengths and just improve with some of their weaknesses as such. Nice. So Nick's, yeah, but he's a member. He's been around tier five. He was Bowers manager for a bit last year, ladies, tier five. He's been involved with Kent. Um, he works with the FA. So he's got a, got a lot of experience with him. And then is it Nicky helping out the physio side as well? Yeah, right? so we, we needed some more hands on. Um, so um, this was Essex University. Nick's doing a degree over there. She's looking for a placement. So yeah, we jumped at the opportunity. She's been a great addition. Brilliant. Great to see. Okay, right. So we're going to go through positions in the squad and talk about who's in and who's who's left us and whatnot. So Jamie Lee Bamford, we knew uh, as our goalkeeper, she had a fantastic season last year. She missed the end of the season anyway because she'd been taking a role in the RAF, which was stepping up. And that's obviously continued for her. I think she's actually going to be playing a bit of football still, but she's not going to be with us next year. Yeah, unfortunately, we've lost Jamie. But, you know, careers are a big challenge for the ladies. We're part-time and, you know, getting a future for themselves. So, yeah, James with the RAF, um, we're in contact and she will be playing um, football, um, probably tier three level, but nice. up in the North League. Okay. And then we've got Christy Howe as well, who came in for a debut season after having played a number of other sports to a high level. Uh, she's not continuing, is that right? Yeah, um, Christy's just decided to, to give goalkeeping up. So, yeah, real potential, that lady. Mm. It's a shame because she had some real attributes, um, it was a pleasant find. Um, we had some big moments. Obviously, she come on in the quarter final of the yeah, FA yeah, Cup. Yeah, yeah, massive. Uh, when Jamie got sent off and made a couple of incredible saves. Yeah, I, I, I was disappointed to lose Christy. But it's a shame because she had a great story. You know, like she started football in her 30s, inspired by the Euro success last year of the women. And yeah, only probably only played about 10 plus games maybe at most before, and definitely lots of potential there. But very talented all-round sportswoman, I think you could say, yeah. which is why she was able to pick it up so quickly. Obviously, that means we needed to bring someone in. Tell me about Frankie Angel, who's joined us. She's ex-Lewis, ex-Brighton and England youth. Yeah, I mean, that says it all, really. It shows the quality that she's got. And, you know, she's living in Brighton and she's travelling up two, three times a week. And But her goalkeeping skills, phenomenal. Yeah. We, we've been very lucky to find someone like that and to have someone like that. So Frankie is going to be a, a major part of the team this year. Great to hear. And she made some big saves against Southampton on Sunday. She pushed that unbelievable strike oh. onto the bar, wasn't it? Onto oh, the post, I think sorry. sometimes we can exaggerate things, but that save was probably yeah. one of the best I've seen in the game. It really was top mm. tier. I had a great view of it from my seat. So welcome, Frankie. Uh, okay, so quite a lot of changes in defence, quite a lot of movement. So I'm going to go through a few of them here. Uh, Keris Adams, look, she was someone that played pre-merger, carried through, played quite a lot of games for the club. Uh, she's not staying on. Yeah, um... And I don't know why. And that sounds like, as a coach, why don't you know? Unfortunately, Kerry's just stopped playing. Right. And communication has been limited since. And we've had to move on. Football doesn't wait. 
So disappointed, but at the same time, I'm sure we respect her decision. Of itself. course. Someone that I think could have handled the level though as well, Keris, like definitely talented oh, enough. There's to play no it. doubt, no yeah. doubt. Athletically, yeah, and she was learning all the time. She was still young. Yeah, yeah, she would have been a, a part of this, no doubt. Another player who was pre-merger carried on as well, Courtney Clark. She obviously had a couple of bad injuries. She had that concussion last season, then she had another injury, um, and we didn't really see most of much of her in the second half of the season, did we? No, unfortunately, the, she dislocated her ankle in training, um, and that put an end to her season, unfortunately. Um, and again. Um, just at the moment, finding a way local football. Uh, yeah, won't be with us this season, I'm afraid. Okay. Maisie Barker. So she had some uh, a bad injury. She was with West Ham for a period, I believe. Yeah. And then she came to us to sort of get back into football, didn't she? She had limited minutes. She was kind of getting confident again with her football. Um, I'm assuming now she feels in a position to play. But then we've seen that she's, she's moved to Ipswich who, and we'll be playing against her this year. Yeah, yeah. I mean... One of the things that we do as a club is help young players get back on their feet. So with Maisie, um, it was important that we used our platform as a way of helping her get back. We always knew that Maisie had the potential to go and play higher level, tier two and above. Um, she just needed some minutes, someone to believe in her. Um, now, yeah, she's gone to Ipswich. And the reason she's gone to Ipswich is because basically of the professional setup that they have. They yeah. train pretty much full time. And she wanted to keep herself in, in that environment. So, yeah. Big loss for us. A good game for Ipswich, but we'll look forward to seeing her on the pitch. Yeah, okay. Um, so Phoebe Merton, we saw at the back end of last season. She had play, played a handful of games. She's not staying? No, no. That, I mean, that was a decision to be fair to Phoebe. She wouldn't have been a starter this year. And she travels all the way up from Kent. Right. So midweek, getting across that tunnel. Um, yeah, we advise yeah, yeah. her to find something local. Fair enough. And then Lucy Critchell, again, she only played at the beginning of last season, really, didn't yeah. she? Then, And she's not continuing. No, not continuing. Um, we found, you know, without being cruel, we found alternatives to that position with, with more of a skill set that we needed. Um, again, she's playing local football, which is best for her. Yeah, we wish her the best. So there's one other person that's sort of in the out category, but we don't really know. And this is... the in terms of the input they made last year and over the last few years, the biggest name here, which is Kat Kahneman. Yeah. So we don't know exactly what's happening with Kat. We don't think the door's completely closed, but we're not going to see her in the, in the early stage of the season, at least. We're never closing the door for you, Kat, OK? <laughs> so that door's always going to be open. Um, yeah, phenomenal person, phenomenal player. Um, yeah, again, new job, new baby. we just got to be patient. Yeah. So we hope to see you back on the pitch one day, Kat, but Kat. we'll give you your time. Got OK. There's a lot of outs. Let's talk about some of the people that are staying as well. Yeah. And there's some big names, obviously, staying, including the captain, fantastic. One of my favourites, I'm happy to say that. Grace Gillard. Uh, she's in the 100 Club as well in terms of appearances now, which is amazing. Uh, amazing season last year. I mean, from a centre-half, 23 goals. It's just disgusting, really. It doesn't seem <laughs> sound legal. 10 assists as well. How important is it that she sticks around? Uh, absolutely. I mean, look, most clubs, successful teams, are built on the foundations of two or three um, key players um, and Grace is top of that pile yeah um, so we need Grace um, but you know we're encouraging her to develop her game even further so you know we've got a real attacking philosophy and that helps give, brings those opportunities for her to score 23 she gets 20 this year we'll be delighted oh, I think she'll take that right now I think she'll take 10 <laughs> I think she'll take 5 we've up a level um, so Courtney Lumley she joined us for the run-in uh, from Billericke uh, great addition. You know, I, I don't think we barely conceded a goal in the league after she joined us. Uh, those two are such a good partnership and she's playing with us, staying with us for this year as well. Yeah, again, Courtney was touted. Um, many clubs have tried to grab hold of Courtney this summer. Um, she really enjoys the setup. She really enjoys the, the girls and she enjoys the, the coaching that we give her. It, those two just complement each other so well and they they will really will provide the foundations for us to... to Perform well, compete in this league. Yeah, you? definitely. Hayley West, could call a defender, could call a midfielder. She's played in both. She's very versatile. Again, really important player. Uh, did score a decent amount of goals as well last year, 13. We don't know where to expect her positionally, but we expect her to be around. Um, Hayley's with us. Hayley's not going anywhere. Um, I think that's um, something that we do as a coaching team. We want players to play multiple positions. I mean, OK, you can say that we've only got five subs. Five subs is a lot, right? But the game changes and we want to try and control the period. So to have players that are versatile, like um, Hayley, Malika, there's two or three of them that can just be moved to certain positions and still not lose our, our, our control. I mean, Hayley's integral to that. So she started off as a centre-back. I then 
moved her to left back. We then put her into centre midfield. So yeah, we've got three quality um, players there. Yeah, your <laughs> your, your manager's player of the season last year. Yeah, as well, yeah, which is um, massive. Because, yeah, she adapted to that centre midfield role really well. Um, we lost obviously one of the players that we're going to be talking about in a minute, and we didn't replace that as such. But someone Haley replaced that for us. Yeah, with goals and energy, unbelievable. Nice. Um, Esme Lancaster came in again at the back end of last year, uh, also from Billericay, uh, which is going to be a good rivalry this year. It's already a rivalry when we were with them in the league before and they, they tipped us to promotion a year before last. We're back in the league with them, but we're also in the league with them in the men's team. So there's going to be some big Billericay games and we play them in the FA Youth Cup as well. Our, our under 18 boys teams do. So there's lots of big hashtag Billericay games. The fact that we've taken a few players from them last year and they're staying speaks highly about our setup, doesn't it? I think so. I think football needs rivalry first, you yes. know, to have that local rivalry is great, but it's competitive on the pitch and, you know, the girls of Billericay are great and our girls are great. So, but we need it. We need it. We need it. So we love it. Something to look forward to. Um, yeah, we've taken Courtney, which was probably their best player um, from previous years. He was their captain. And Esme was coming back from an ACL and unfortunately they didn't see the potential that Esme had. Um, we did. So we helped her get back the end of last year. And she's an integral part of our squad for this season. Yeah, just, always puts a great shift in, hasn't he? Uh, and Maddie Farrand also joined us sort of mid to the back end of last year at left back. Scored a few goals as well. She she looked lively. Yeah, yeah. We converted her from a left wing to a left back. And that natural attacking instinct. Yeah, again, one that's got good pedigree at tier three. Um, fortunately, she won't be with us at the start. She sort of visas out because she's got a British Canadian passport. But right. she will be back towards the end of August. And then providing she stays fit in Canada, Maddie, um, then, yes, you'll be straight back into the squad. Get your visa sorted, man. Yeah, get it, Bill. Uh, okay, so they're the people that are staying. There's one other person in the defenders list, which might surprise people to see her as a defender. And the fact is you could put her in any category, really, probably in goal, if you give her a chance. Oh, she has tried. Um, is Malika. So we've got Malika obviously sticking around, massive for us, you know, goals, assists, she does everything. Uh, 20 goals, 30 assists last year. It's, it's insane. Are we? Is this a... Is this a clue that we might see her further back this year? I think it depends on the game. Right? We've got to respect the opposition a lot more this year. We can't just impose our own attacking style because there's going to be some quality players. So depending on the matchup, we will see Malika vary positions. Um, we're talking about goalkeepers. She actually bought a pair of goalkeeper gloves, so don't rule it out. Really? Wow. <laughs> don't rule it out. I rate it. I mean, and it's easy to forget because she's been such a goal-scoring threat for a couple of years now that she did start as a left-back for us. Which yeah, really came she in. came to us as a left-back. I saw the qualities in her pretty quick, moved her up front. Look, she's just a diamond again. When we talk about one of the two or three of those players that are essential, she's one of those. Yeah, 100%. Great to have Malika sticking around. A couple of ins in the defensive uh, column as well. Uh, Alina Saulo, um, left back from Finland. Yeah, well, that's the appeal of hashtag, right? We are global. <laughs> Getting over from Finland. <laughs> yeah. Love to see it. Alina um, popped over a couple of times early in the year um, to train with us. I mean, again, to be honest, it was because she heard about hashtag. And um, yeah, and we saw her training. We played her in a couple of friendly games and we thought, yeah, she'll be a good addition to the squad. So, We've got to look, we've got to na navigate things through the season. It's not just straightforward as having 16, 17 players. Because we are part-time, we've got to accept that players have other commitments. Yeah. So Lane is one of those that's going to really help us out during the season, without a doubt. Great to have you on board. And then let's talk about Charlotte Cresswell. Uh, she can play fullback, she can play centre mid, she's ex Gillingham, which is now called Chatham. Yeah. And we played them first game, funnily enough. Um, she's come over. Yep, yeah, as we will highlight, we've taken a number of players from the ex Gillingham. Um, she is predominantly a centre midfielder. We're, we're going to co convert her to whatever position we need. We need that versatility. But she has been doing a few pre season games as fullback. Um, and again, doing very well. So again, to have that versatility is important. Brilliant. Okay. Right, let's move into midfield. Quite a few outgoings here as well. Uh, one of the big ones, I'd say, uh, been an amazing servant for the last few years, Sasha Adamson. Yeah. Oh, God. Sometimes you have to make cool decisions. And Sasha, I'm really sorry. As a person, she is one of the best. One of the best that we could have. And we talk about how we grade people. Um, you know, our model is based on personality, characteristics, then we look at the physical attributes and then we look at the technical side. Because as coaches, we can we believe we can improve anyone as, coach, as a player. Even me? <laughs> Mate, I don't, well, I'm not the Pope. I can't commit miracles. <laughs> can't improve on greatness. <laughs> but we'll give it a go. We'll give it a go. <laughs> yeah, that's the other side. <laughs> but Sash, yeah. But Sash is just, she's such a wild spirit. Right? She goes off travelling a lot. She works with 
British um, Gymnastics Association. Well, I say gymnastics, Olympics British athletes and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. and stuff like that. And she's just off around the world and it's very hard to commit to the level of football that we are. Um, unfortunately, we just had to make a decision based on commitment and right. she just wasn't there for us when we needed it. Yeah, she's all, on the match days and things. Like She obviously helped us out a lot off camera when she was injured. She was on commentary with Eddie as well. So I, I obviously it's all about the whole package with regards to training awesome. and being available all the yeah. time. But one thing we can definitely say is that when she was here, she was always fully committed. You know, it's, she was always really got into what Hashtag was about. So we do thank Sasha for that. Scored some big goals for us as well. That massive goal against Billericay in the Essex Cup final. We went on to win. She got us back in the game. Huge player. Yeah, yeah. And again, you know, the Dartford game in the FA Cup last year. I mean, yes. we, we went to a, a team lower than us and she came on a sub and, you know, her inspiration helped us lift. Um, again, really hard. To, hardest decision I've had to make since being in this club, without a doubt. You wow. know, it was, wasn't something that we just flicked our, clicked our fingers and that was it. We actually seriously thought about it and... Yeah, with a heavy heart, with a heavy heart, no doubt. Hopefully she gets back into football. I think she might have to have an operation on an injury as well, but she obviously missed a bit of football and hopefully we'll see you at a game, Sasha. Always welcome. Uh, someone else that is moving on after being part of a, a league winning season last year uh, and an international. She had a good summer with Bermuda, of course, Ava Frazzoni. Yeah. So I think it was just uh, sometimes you just got to balance the squad up between the skill sets of players coming in, the skill sets that you require going forward. Um, and we've got some quite exciting players coming in and we just felt some people might not be too happy being a squad player right. rather than they want to be in the 11 and we just weighed it all up and we just felt the skill set we need a different approach this season. Okay. But again, massive part of the club last year coming in and helping us get that promotion. And like I said in the men's team video, you know, no matter how long someone's time with hashtag is, if they come in and they help us achieve what we're trying to do, which that promotion was very important. And they're all legends in our, in our brain. So, you know, always welcome. We hope to see Ava again. Uh, Brooke Cairns, obviously we had on loan over a couple of seasons from West Ham. Um, she, she went up to Ipswich, I think it was, wasn't it? For the, the back end of last season on loan uh, to try and get some experience at a high level. But uh, she's ultimately, I think she's been released by West Ham now, but obviously we're not going to see her again at hashtag. We don't no, think. I'm unfortunately she lives in Liverpool. Yeah. So. And I live in Derby, so I've, she drives down to me and et cetera, yeah. could. But no, I don't think we're, our paths are going to cross anytime soon. But we wish Brooke all the best. Great character. Yeah. Real potential. But yeah, we, you know, we enjoyed our time with us. Yeah, Seriously. and it's always amazing to be able to get that those sort of players from a setup like West Ham. It, I think it speaks to our connections with those clubs. You know, it's, it's really, as, as a West Ham fan, I loved it as well. Um, Lauren Griffiths, now she came in what seemed like a really short period of time last year, probably about a month or so she played with us, came fairly well recommended as a tier three player from, from Huddersfield, but wasn't didn't stick around too long. Can we yeah. just confirm what happened there? Yeah, unfortunately, like I said, if I go back to our player model, top of that tree is personality, characteristics, fitting in with the group. And when you're in the middle of the season, so it was January that she'd come in, I mean, we needed cover. And yes, she was recommended to us, but unfortunately didn't quite fit the model that we wanted. So right. we had to make a decision there. Okay. Well, we wish, wish you the best, Lauren. Uh, Shania Foley didn't play a great deal last year, but she did play a little bit more at the start of the season. She no longer at the club? Yeah, no, Shania, she lives quite a way away and she got injured as well. Right. Um, she was a squad player um, at the beginning of the season. Um, unfortunately, yeah, she found more local football. Okay. All right. Sticking around though, of course, we have some big names, including someone that's won best young player in a row for two years. Um, and uh, yeah, massive player for the club, isn't it? Sophie Kelly, she's been pre-merger as well. She's been around for a while. Yeah, yeah. I'm lucky enough to have had Sophie all for her youth as well. So I know her capabilities. I know the potential she's got. She's going to get better and better. She's only a young girl. Um, and again, her performance on Sunday just shows the yeah. potential that she has. 100% yeah. really maturing into that, that midfield role. Um, also, shout out to the Kelly family. You've got a dad, Stephen Kelly. He's a big part of the club as well. He took on the secretary role last year, did a great job. So we do appreciate the whole Kelly family. Uh, Maisie Garwood came in as a new player last year and she's sticking around. Yeah, yeah, we hope to. Again, Maisie's got real potential. We've got to try and extract that potential. She's got all the attributes that you want. Um, it's our job now as coaches to make sure that she delivers on the pitch. Okay, look forward to seeing some big Garwood performances. Uh, Eva Carvalho joined us season before last. Looked like she'd been converted to a bit of a fullback at the start of last year. Actually played pretty well first few games, then picked up a nasty injury, which ended up being an ACL injury. Yeah. Is she on the route to recovery? She is. This is her second ACL injury in a matter of years. So, look, we're giving her support. She's still around. Um, 
we're just going to have to play this one by ear. Um, yeah. yeah, we'll just see how we recover. We guys, we'll support her in every way that we can. And um, she's up and about now, unaided. She's walking. She's been around the group. So, yeah, maybe we'll look at this one after Christmas and we'll okay. see where we are. Good. All right, we'll keep an eye on that one. Let's talk about some of the ins then in midfield. Phoebe Williams, ex-Southampton captain. She's won tier three before with Southampton. She's been at Oxford more recently. What can you tell me about Phoebe? Well, should we save it and let people watch her? <laughs> right, okay. Because she is a box-to-box midfielder. Okay. And she's got goals in her. She's got energy. She's got big tackles. I mean, she's technically profound. We are very lucky to have a player like that in our squad. She could be the difference between us competing mid-table or that upper end. That's how much I rate her. Wow, that's amazing. And we didn't get to see her against Southampton either. She was unavailable for that game. And But is she going to be available first game of the season? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, 100%, unless something drastically happens. Okay, of course. Yeah, you never know, do you, until the day. But um, that's good to see. A new player. You won't have seen any of her, really. Has she played a game for the club yet? No. No. Um, we, I don't know if I can go into the reasons why on that one. But well, no, she just wasn't available yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah she, um, <laughs> so it's going to be literally her debut against Chatham. Yeah. Away, all things, if all things go to plan this Sunday. So that's going to be great to see. Uh, and you know, another, we're calling it an in, like a new signing, but it's not really an in. It's more like a returning. And it's a, one of my favourites, I have to say, Gemma Baker, a.k.a. Yeah. Gemma Bella. She's back. Oh, we're so pleased. And she's hungry as well. You know, so... Obviously, we know that Gemma paused for a season to have a baby. Yeah. Um, and now the, um, she's ready to go, you know, pre-season, hungry, looking good. Yeah, we're excited. Um, we know what technical ability she has. She can open up teams with, with a click. Yeah. So her, Phoebe, and the forward line that we've got. Yeah. It's going to be exciting. Expect to see plenty of goal kicks plucked out the air. By Gemma Baker, I'm really happy with that. She's got that <laughs> mum strength now as well that you can only have from being a parent. That's going to make a big difference. Mate, honestly, you're right there. It's <laughs> like she's gone up another level on that. Oh, one. God, loved it. Love to hear it. <laughs> um, okay, Macy Nichols, West Ham, dual registration. What can you tell me about her? Yeah, yeah. So, again, continuing our relationship with West Ham. Um, we had first pick of a number of real talented youngsters. Um, we can't sign them all, obviously. Yeah. Um, so, we've gone with 16-year-old Macy Nichols. What I like about her is that she's got this real natural youth ability where they have no fear. Mm. And one thing she does is that she just drives with the ball at the heart of the defence, but she's really composed when she when she's driving. She sees that pass, all angles. But I'm not saying she's the next Messi or anything like that, but what I'm Never saying say is never. You're gonna, you've got a young player who's got real potential. And we're not going to put the weight of expectation on our shoulders, but she is going to be a great addition to us. Those last 25, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, she is going to open up teams. Nice. Real quality there. That's great. And obviously, thanks to West Ham again for, for giving us the opportunity. Uh, and then Jade Keogh has come over from Millwall. Yeah, Jade's got some great experience at this level. So yes, Millwall last year, but before that, I believe she's had spells with championship clubs as well as Gillingham in Tier 3. So... We needed some experience in that squad as well. Um, she's, again, someone that's come across hungry. She, yeah, absolute diamond of a person. It's going to be, uh, well, I'd say, it's going to be so important for us as we go forward the season. Brilliant. Okay. So that's the midfield. Let's look ahead to the forwards now. Uh, in terms of outgoings, I can tell you, currently, we don't have any. There is no one in the out column, which is good, especially when, you know, our... our Lightning attack was such a big part of why we did what we did last year. So um, obviously we've we've talked about Malika in the in the defence column. Sammy Rowland though was our top goal scorer last year. Thirty eight goals, twenty four assists, uh, top goal scorer in the FA Cup, um, unbelievably. And she's sticking around. That's good, right? It's great. You can't great. say anything more than that. I mean, look, Sammy again it wasn't through the lack of people didn't want her. Loads of clubs coming for Sammy this summer, so she had some tough choices to make. But we're glad that she decided to stay with us. Definitely. And I think it's it's nice because we're obviously, with the journey going up from Tier 4 to Tier 3, you know, you, it's the same for the men as well. You want to see those players. A lot of the players, like Sammy, have played high levels already before, right? But you want to see how they can do in the new challenge. It'd be different if we were sitting in the same division again. It was kind of a rinse and repeat. But it's a new world for Hashtag. So it's always great when people believe in the project and stick around. Um, speaking of which, someone has been massive for us the last few years since she was runner-up in the Hashtag Academy season. Uh, series, I should say, Emma Samways, who did score her only goal at St Mary's Stadium against Southampton. Yeah, well, Emma's got some unique attributes. You know, the way that she dribbles the ball, runs at players. She's 
fearless, relentless. So important to our system. Um, yeah, delighted to keep Emma. Yeah, I know she's a real fan favourite as well, so they'll be very happy to see her sticking around. And then Kelly Welfall as well. Her, her football's really been limited last few years, but one thing that's remained the same is her goal per minute ratio is outstanding. Whether she plays five minutes at the end of a game, just one half as we saw her for a, a while for, due to her injury issues, she's consecutively and consistently scoring goals. How much of a part do we expect her to play this year? Yeah, well... First of all, she's got to get some injuries out of the way, little niggles. Um, look, Kelly is a natural striker. Not many, I say, I've seen around in the women's game that have that natural ability to finish. She's so composed in front of goal. Um, she is going to be so important to us. And if we can get Kelly fit and firing and injury free, we've got a player there, a serious player. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Need to get her as available as possible. And then you've also got Amy Lee Abrahart again, going into her third season at the club. Still young. Yeah. Amy, Amy, just got so much potential. And again, set back with injuries at the moment. Hasn't done any pre-season. Didn't finish the end of last season. Navig two different problems, by the way. They're not the same problem. Right. Um, we don't think she's a million miles away, but again, we're not going to see Amy until probably latter part of October, November. Okay. Got to be patient on that one, but it's yeah. good that she's sticking at the club. Uh, a couple of new additions in attack, though. Very excited to see these two, uh, both of which have played for Gillingham and Charlton. Uh, first one being Georgia Griffin. What can you tell me about Georgia? Yeah, yeah, with Gigi. I've been chasing Gigi on and off for the last few years. Um, again, athletic, um, great finisher, work rate tremendous. Got that desire to when you know when your team's under their cosh, she's the type of girl that will lift the team up and go versatile. So everything that we've built our forward line on, so just another one that can add to the equation there. Nice, excited to see her play. And then uh, I want to get this pronunciation right. We've got Cara Fiorgio. That's how I'm saying it. Okay, that's yeah. how we'll say it then. Yeah. <laughs> um, as I mentioned, Gillingham, Charlton, former clubs, also Millwall. Yeah, Cara, technically brilliant. She's got like the touch of Gemma. She's got pace. She's got a power of Malika in terms of her finishing, etc. Again, we're just privileged to have five, six or six yeah. centre forwards that are going to be really pushing each other. And, you know, when you look at it, whoever's starting, the ones that are coming off the bench, you've, you know, it's not the end of us. We're coming at you again. No, I mean, I'm looking at this and it sounds like you're going to have your work cut out picking the team, to be honest. There's a few ones that sort of pick themselves. I mean, that's obviously subjective. But then there's a lot of new players going up against some very experienced players for us. And it's like, are you, are you thinking it's a headache for your first Yeah, yeah, that's what you want, though. As a coach, yeah. you want a headache. I mean, let's be fair, in over the past few years, we've had a, a brilliant 13, 14 players, but maybe 15, 16, you know, you use when you, as and when you need it. Now I'm looking at that bench and I'm thinking, you girls out there, you've got to justify while you're out there, yeah, you know, and because these girls can come in and take your place, and that's what we want—that competitiveness within the squad. Yeah. So, yeah, really, really excited to see how that we're going to manage that. Okay, um, but form dictates, right? So as long as we're honest and true to that, the the girls will pick themselves in certain ways, outside of the tactical element. Well, it's great to see you're in that that situation where you've got these these players you're disposed on. A big part of that is our new sponsors, who we haven't named and announced yet, but we will be very soon. But you know, them supporting the club and buying into women's football ultimately is that how we've been able to, you know, continue to hopefully improve the squad. Do you feel like you've got a stronger squad to what you started this time last year with? Well, let's go back a couple of years, it's, you know, and this is not trying to blow smoke up, hashtag, you know, etc. But Please, the support, feel free. No, no, but the support that you've given us has been brilliant. You know, from my days of AFC Basildon to, you know, and I've said this a few times in interviews, we was on the brink of just going out. So when you come in and supported us, you haven't just supported us, you know, in, you know with your putting up a team under the club's name. You come down to every game. You know, you, you've backed us up with everything that we need. You know, for what we are, we're, we couldn't be in a better place. So, you know, thanks to everyone behind the scenes and, and to yourself on that. So, and it's your platform that attracts the sponsors. Yeah. So without that, again, we're probably not in a position where we are. So, but the journey that we've got at the moment is, is only going one way. And it's my job now to make sure that we achieve that next level. Yeah, no, I mean, I appreciate that. I think there's so many moving parts, though, because you've got everyone working in coordination. You guys doing a great job attracting these players, finding these players, managing them, making sure you keep, you know, the, the ship steady. It is probably going to be a bit rockier and potentially than the last few years are because we're at this higher level. We expect maybe, you know, some more challenges. And it kind of felt, with the exception of a few games the last few years, that we were expecting to win almost every game we turned up at, which is 
again, you know, thanks to what you put together as a squad, but we do expect some teams to really want to impose their will on us this year. So it's going to be great to see how we adjust. But then equally, you know, that's why I put a lot of praise back on the sponsors. Not all sponsors, uh, not everyone has the vision for women's football. You do have to have a bit of an idea of, I think I can see where this can go and want to get behind it. And it is a, it's a very noble uh, cause, I think, to get behind. And we've seen the, the repercussions of what, lots of brands and, and the Premier League and the men's side putting money into it and all these things. The increased FA Cup prize money last year, which was really welcome for us because we had a good run. It'd be great to have one again. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, it's a lot of different things all helping grow the game. So we appreciate not only what you guys do, the sponsors, and you guys watching these videos as well. It all, all, it all ties together. You support it, even if it's not a financial decision to support it. Just watching the videos allows us to make more and it all kind of has a cyclical effect. So... That's the squad. Let's talk about the immediate uh, future, these next few games. We talked about on the men's team having a pretty tough start. I think you might have tipped them. I think the women's team have got a tougher start. Let's take a look at it. Chatham away, which is an area in Kent, but it's formerly known as Gillingham. So was, they were a, uh, a... Have they been a championship side? Um, I'm not that. too sure of their history, to no. be honest. But they've, been, they've always been tier three sort of side. They were successful. yeah. Uh, under Gillingham, they changed. They, they had a bit of a rough patch, I think, financially. They sort of looked for a new support and they've come under the umbrella of Chatham, which is also a team that the men's team are in the same league as this year. So as well as the double rivalry of Billericay, we also have it with Chatham. So we play them first, established step three side. Then we have Oxford away. Oxford were right up there pushing for promotion. Remember, you could win the league and not go up last year. And there's a few of these teams that are in the race to win the league last year. One of them is after Oxford, Ipswich at home, who... Got promotion through the uh, sort of points per game COVID year. We were right behind them that year, but they did have the better points per game and, you know, they did deserve that. But then we beat them last year, which they won't have forgot in the cup. I'm sure they'll be remembering that when we play them at their place. And they always get good support as well. And then after Ipswich, we have Portsmouth, uh, who are another team that were in the mix last year. So you can't really have asked for a harder start. Oh, you forgot to add rugby after that, which is Coventry. Of course. Here too. Yeah, rugby. And that's, there's also a bit of history there because yeah. another rebrand is Coventry have become rugby. They've come down from tier two from the championship and we play them after Portsmouth. <laughs> so in a 12-team league, we've pretty much got the five toughest game. No disrespect to the other teams in the league, of course, but yeah, you couldn't have designed yeah. a harder I mean, start. ultimately, look, when you get to this level, there's no easy games, right? No. Just when you think, you can't afford to take your foot off the pedal. And look, that's one of the, the great things of Hashtag, right? Because we know that whoever we're playing against, they all want to beat you. So yeah. over the last few years, teams have turned up with their best 11, 16, whatever. So we've had that opportunity to install that mentality. We don't fear anyone. So look, yes, I get it that Oxford are one of the best and... And if you was a betting man, you'd probably look at Oxford, Portsmouth and Ipswich as the three favourites for the league. Right. Not disrespecting rugby as well, but, you know, they've had to overcome a complete change this season, so we don't know if that's going to... And they're playing the wrong sport. Yeah. <laughs> well, in theory, by Can't name. Can't use your hands, guys. I keep telling you. <laughs> by name. Um, so they're going to be, but at the end of the day, they're also playing hashtag. And exactly. I'm not, I'm not, we're not a bad side, right? No. As we said, we um, in the Cup last year, we managed to turn over a full strength for Ipswich. Yeah. We took... Watford, 90 minutes. It's extra time, um, yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah, I think people, if they underestimate us, and I really do mean it, if they underestimate us, more for them. Yeah. Because we won't be underestimating anyone. No. I like it. I'm excited. It's what we, we've earned this more competitive league, ultimately. We've, we've, it's, it's, a, it's a reward for our great work to get up to this tier that now we have potentially no easy games. And, uh, I mean, put it in perspective, again, we talked about our pre-season. We've beaten two tier, tier three sides already. We've beaten tier three sides when we were a tier four side in competitive games a couple of occasions. Um, you know, even the Southampton loss 4-1, we lost in the end to them. Uh, they beat a team in our league 14-1 the week before. You know, they're no mugs, Southampton. That's what they could do to you. And we managed to hold off, you know, and be one new up late in the game. So, listen, really excited. Um, and, you know, that's that's it really. Like, how how what is your main, if you had to use one word to kind of describe your emotions, your your thought process going into this season are you excited are you nervous are you what is it i'm going to use three words okay and we're going to play with with no fear nice okay so the girls are up for the challenge look we've got a free reign at this right because nobody expects hashtag to be challenging near the top of the league there's three or four clubs as we mentioned expect to be challenging at the top end of the league so what have we got to lose a bit more pressure on them you could argue yeah the, the money they're spending and yeah Exactly. No, yeah. it's nice. It's yeah. nice to be not not the ones that everyone's everyone's going to still want to beat us. But you know, like 
we couldn't slip up last year, could we? It was constant. Every week it was that knowledge. You just literally draw a game and it could cost you promotion. You know, and that's the same in this league. It's still only one team that goes up, but maybe like, that pressure's felt on the other teams more than us. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, going back to tier four, you had Billy Ricky, Wimbledon and ourselves. And yeah, you couldn't drop a point no. because they're relentless. They're behind you. And no doubt Wimbledon will probably win every game in the league this year because Billy Ricky and ourselves are out of it. Um, but going into this league, like you said, you can't take your eye off it because there are no easy games where we could probably play 50% last year and still come away with a win. Yeah. Here, you play 50%, you're going to lose your games. I guess the so, plus side of that, though, is because there's so many more stronger teams in this league, it's less likely that one or two are going to run away with it, which means dropping a game here or there doesn't necessarily count you out. Because, you know, it's not, I don't, would it be fair to say there's probably not going to be one team winning every single game this year and there's going to be teams taking points off each other. Yeah, well, 100%. We just mentioned those four teams, right? Yeah. They're going to be expected to be competing at the top. So I think the team that comes on top of that mini league will probably win the league right. in that sense. Um, for us, as a such, um, look, we've got our own little goals. One was a little challenge I've set the girls. We don't want to lose to any team home and away. Yeah. So, you know, a little challenge there. We've, we've identified a, a little mini league where that is. And unfortunately for the girls in that mini league, it involves nine teams. Yeah. So we want to be the top of that mini league. <laughs> the league itself is mini yeah. league, 12 teams, isn't it? <laughs> well, the thing is, if we don't have those goals to aim for, then what are you doing? People, you know, I've, I've had this conversation so many times this summer. What's your realistic ambition? You know, we had a conversation before. It's like, you've challenged me to get up to that next league and you'll are you're find the support. Yeah, give me a good... Get I said the same thing yeah. to Devs, really. It's like, you know... If we end up getting promoted, it's, no one's going to complain. It's going to no. be a good problem because it gets expensive, obviously. That's the main implication. Yeah. You know, if, if, if you go out to the championship, there's an expectation to kind of be a professional setup in that league. Um, and obviously, you're one off the Super League. Like, there's some serious teams in our league. But the championship, you know, the last few years, I've seen the likes of Liverpool and Man United in the championship. Like, Absolutely. So, you know, if, it's, no one's going to get up there by accident is the reality of it, I don't think. Because it's, no. so, it's not like the men's league where you've got a playoff and you could actually finish fifth in the league and still just... On, couple of good games in a row suddenly find yourself in the National League South um, in the Women's League you, you've got serious competition and one spot for it but listen if we if we ain't managed to do it this year or any other year it'd be an unbelievable achievement and I think that's the main thing I sort of say to you guys watching at home much like we said to the the guys watching the men's video is you know this go in exactly what Jason says like optimistic that we can there's no reason why we can't dream and we can't really do some, some unbelievable make some history and some, some great performances along the way but equally understand it is a new level and there are some tough teams and it is a tough start. So it's also like plan for both eventualities. If it doesn't go to plan, know that it's the same people working off the pitch that have brought us the success. You know, it's a lot of the same squad with some improvements in there. It's the same people that, that have figured out our problems before and taken us where we need to get to. So it's exactly what we do, even if it's a different challenge, even if it's a, a month of bad form, which every team is, is, you know, capable of having, yeah, maybe more capable at this league. So let's just keep behind the team and see what we can do. And I think so. And I think, you know, from a fan's perspective, the ones that attend our games, they're realistic. Yeah. They, you know, they are very, they summarise the game, they summarise where we are very well. So, you know, we're, we're privileged to have those fans that follow us all around the country, by the way, which yeah. is great. Shout out to you guys. Um, but yeah, be, let's be realistic where we are because we could, you know, and I'm not saying this is going to be the way, but you could look at this after five games and think, well, oh, hashtag, hashtag, bottom of the league. But put it in perspective, right? Put it in perspective. Yeah. And let's, you know, let's see where we are. I think that would be a good... We'll really know in the next four to six weeks after some of these games, like, where the level is compared to them. Because they've all with their own pre-seasons and they've strengthened and whatnot. And there's a lot of teams there that were desperate for promotion and didn't get it. So they'll be going hard this year. So it's good in a way, I think, this first, this tough month, because it gives you a really good indicator. And I think, listen... Pick up a few points from those games and anything's possible because there's plenty more points to get. Yeah, I think it's harder for them to take the points off us than it is the other way around because, yeah. like you said, the expectations on them. You know, We just want to be a part of that competitive balance. Definitely. I mean? So that's what we want to be. I'm buzzing for it, Jason. Chatham away is our first game. It's in Kent. Uh, if you can be there, please make it down. Uh, we won't be streaming that game as it's an away game, but we will be streaming our home games as ever. So remember, if you're a member to the YouTube channel. You get to see those games live. There's links in the description and the money you pay goes straight to the club and we benefit from it. So we do appreciate that. It's not just women's homes games. It, uh, it's men's home games when we can stream them. Um, it's reserve games. It's loads of extra content. Um, you get your little badge to use in the in the comments as well and lots of other benefits. So, But the best benefit is feeling like you're really helping the club and you're an extra part of it. So yeah, chat them away. And then Oxford away. Ipswich at home is the first home game. Big game. We beat them at home last year. Let's see if we can do it again. Hopefully see some of you there. Drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. Leave us a comment below. 
with any other women's content you'd like to see this year and we'll try our best to make it happen. Until next time, up the tags.